why is Friday good? Jesus was crucified. He was killed. So why is Friday good? <clears throat> Jesus died. And I want us to, to realize this. A terrible death. A terrible death. Um, you know, when he, he was thirsty, they gave him with a brush vinegar. Now, this might not sound so nice to everybody. The brush they use is the brush they use to wipe the backsides of people when they, when they go to the toilet. It's the same brush they dipped into the vinegar and they give him, they give him vinegar to drink. So the death Jesus died was terrible. There was darkness. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He was, he was all by himself. No, I lie. We, Louis was in it. Hallelujah. We, our sin was in it. But, you know, a lot of times we zoom in on this. Today I want to zoom in what happened. What happened? At that time, the church history says that about 10,000 Jews were crucified, were killed by crucifixion. And um, I don't know whose bread is this, and it's so beautiful. And if I can use it, it's okay. You know, it's not wasn't cut in nice blocks. It was destroyed, his body. It was terrible. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, it was terrible. So I don't want to lighten the death of Christ. But this morning, this morning, I want us to realize something happened with us. Turn with me to Colossians um, chapter 2. <coughs> Sorry. Colossians chapter 2, and I'm going to skip a, a couple of verses, but let's start at verse 1. He says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also uh, will appear with him in glory. Verse 5. Put to death. Therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Let's just jump to nine, verse 9. Do not lie to each other. Since you have been taken um, of your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. Verse 11. Here there is no Gentile or Jew or circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian Sanathium, slave or free, but we are all one in. Thank you, thank you. Christ is all and <coughs> is in all. Therefore, verse 12, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Father, I thank you. I thank you for the manual. I thank you that you <coughs> have written down, Lord, for us the manual so that we can read today who we have became in Christ. And Jesus, today we celebrate. We celebrate that you were willing to go all the way. We celebrate that you thought of us. We celebrate that you didn't turn around. We celebrate that you didn't give way to your flesh. We celebrate that you died, but that you also rose. 
and that you are victorious today in God the Father, sitting at the right hand, interceding for us. Father, come and bless your word this morning so that we can realize what happened to us in Christ on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Who and what died on the cross? Who and what died on the cross? We think coming to church is church. We think, well, you know, being a, a Catholic or a Baptist or an Anglican, that's church. No, 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 no. It's bigger than that. It's what we have become. And because we know that, we display that to the world. Because we know that, we display that to the world. Let's look into Romans 6. Uh, please go and read the whole of Romans 6. It's a very good chapter. Um, verse 6, listen. He says, For we know that our old self, our what? Oh, our old self was crucified with him. What happened on the cross, church? Who got crucified? We got crucified. On the cross, in him, listen. With, in order that sin's dominion, sin was alive and well. Sin lived in the garden of Eden. Sin was visiting Adam and Eve. And their sin has overcome Adam and Eve. Sin. But listen. So that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. What happened in the cross, church? What happened there? We've been set free from slavery to sin. That's who you are. That's who we are, Christians. That we've been set free from being enslaved to sin. If you don't like it, there's a black mark on my table. Come and just scratch it out of your Bible. But that's written. And God says, remind me so that we can remember. Listen, so that we may no longer be enslaved to sin. Verse 7. Since a person who has died is freed from sin's claim. A person who has died. What is verse uh, 6 is? For we know that our old self was crucified. Did your old person die? Are you a new creation? Yeah, and sometimes we try, and I try, and I fast, and I pray, and then whatever. You should fast. You should pray. But not to gain God's favor. You are favored by God. You see, it's not trying to get to a place of victory. No, church, on the cross, we became victorious in Christ. That's who you are. That's who you are. Why? Because of Jesus. Please hear my heart this morning. I don't push Jesus aside this morning and, 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 <coughs> sorry, and lift us up. No, 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 no. But I want to bring home this morning who we are because of Jesus. Because the enemy, the liar, lies to us and we feel we are not good enough. He tells us, he lies to us. And you know what, in the meantime, the world is going to hell because the church don't act victorious. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Let me carry on. <clears throat> um, now, if a person is dead, another word for dead, I, I looked into the dictionary and I thought, how can I explain this better? And it's a, 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 a dead, 
uh, uh, useless, worthless body. A dead, useless body. Now, according to the Bible, that old self has become a dead, useless body. A dead, useless. Let me let me get scripture. Colossians two verse nine and ten. Listen. Listen. <clears throat> Do not lie to each other, since you have been taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge, in the, uh, in the knowledge, in the image of your Creator. The knowledge about your Creator. That's how you've been renewed. That's what happened 2,000 years ago on the cross when Jesus died. You know what? When I was a little child, I remember my nana had a, they, they wear a hat. And you know, they had a big needle going through to keep their hat on. And, and I must sit and listen to this pastor and he was not talking about it. And it didn't make sense to me. And I would go like this. And then I would pull out this pin and just go like and, and then when I go home, I know it's hiding time. Church, I want to wake us up this morning. I want to take the pin out and give you a prick. And say, come on. We are alive and well in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory is ours. Hmm. Well, there was different deaths in the Bible. We read about three different ones. And the first one was spiritual death. When Adam sinned, he died spiritually. God said, remember Adam, if you eat, you will die. Now, Adam didn't drop down dead. He died spiritually. And the second one is physical death. Don is here all by himself today because Lynn physically fell over a few weeks ago. She graduated. And then there's eternal death. That's what people... When they fall over, they've been separated from God for eternity. That is eternal death. So what happened on the cross, listen to this. We have received new life in Christ. Let's go to, to Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.10. Now, I just want to rephrase this. We have, Barbara, you have received new life in Christ. Listen what, what Paul writes. This is now being made evident uh, through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and Immortality. Come on, come on, church. If you are in Christ, you are immortal. I don't care if you Rambo or whatever bow. Well, I am immortal. I don't care what spirit. I don't care what demon. I don't care what culture. I am immortal in Christ Jesus. In Africa, they don't play games. I see a lot in front of my house. The guys will go, well, who? In Africa, they said, give me 10 bucks. You said, no. They take 10 bucks. You know what? What we have celebrated two weeks or three weeks ago with Lynn, she has become immortal. Her body, um, went back from from dust to dust but she loves eternal she has become let me go back to the scripture eternal 
Let me find my scripture. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off the oath. Oh, no, that's not. Ah, 1 Timothy. This is now being made evident through the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, come on, church. What are we seeing in Kaitaya and surroundings? Sometimes we see darkness. Sometimes the, the media will spread lies or whatever and make it darker than what it is. But they will never, not yet, proclaim the light that the church has brought into Kaitaya. Oh, yeah. Who's the church? Each one of us. Each one of us. We got a new neighbor, and it's lovely. The first thing she did when she, when we went and introduced ourselves, is tell her about our, her problems. Exciting, exciting. You know why? Because she sees righteousness, not in Louis, not in Joey, but in our dependability, the righteousness of Christ. That has been taken place in us. Can I get an amen? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The second thing. So the first thing we have received a new life. The second thing. Our debts has been cancelled. Our debts have been cancelled. Listen, Colossians 2.14. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations. That was against us and opposed to us. And has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. You know what? <clears throat> Years ago I used this example and I want to use it again. If you, uh, if you take people out for a meal. Not our people, I mean. We're not like that. But you take somebody out for a meal. And, uh, and they order. Um... You say, can I have one of these hamburger and chips? And they say, okay. And they write it up. And then they came back and they said something else. Yeah, can I have one of these desserts and one of those? And yeah, yeah, they write it up. And everybody orders. And at the end of the night, it comes a little strip with a price at the bottom and guess what it needs to be paid each one of us your sin your sin nature your own deeds your everything was written up you see, the devil, one thing about him, he's not lazy. If you do something, he will write it up. If you look at something, he will write it up. And then he will come. But you know what? He erased the certificate of death. With its obligation that was against us and opposed us and has taken it out of the way by nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah! You know, <clears throat> you know the, the Aussie Haka? You know when you take people out for a meal and they order and they order and they order and by late night, you know, um, there comes the bill. And then the ones you took out, they go like this. Until you take out your wallet and pay. And they said, okay, next time. I can't find my wallet now. <laughs> Ozzy Harker. Jesus paid it all. Is it too easy? Well, take it out of your Bible. If you think. It's too easy. Listen, I want to read you the New Living Translation on this. 
We had broken the law many times, in many ways. Those sins were held against us by the law. The law had writings which said we were sinners. Yeah, the law, through what you have done, said that you were a sinner. But listen, but now he has destroyed that writing by nailing it to the cross. Hallelujah! So if the devil comes to you again and he said to you, well, it is, you know, you have done this, said, well, he nailed it to the cross. And thank you, devil, for reminding me. Father, thank you. Sorry that I disappoint you. That I jump into my old nature again. Father, forgive me. Thank you that I've been set free even before I've done it. Thank you. Come on, next one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The third thing, the last thing that I'm going to talk about this morning. He stripped away the power of the enemy. He stripped away the power of the enemy. Oh, pastor, you know, I, I couldn't resist doing that because the devil made me do it. The Greek for that is rubbish. Rubbish. Listen, let's go to the scripture, to Colossians 2, 15. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities Listen, he disarmed him, the rulers and the authorities, and listen, uh, uh, make uh, uh, and disgraced him publicly. He triumphed over them by him. God, Jesus, triumphed over the powers of Satan in the power of his father. He disarmed the rulers and the authorities. They, the devil, is a little Mickey Mouse with a megaphone going like, Wah. The Bible says he's going like a roaring lion. He doesn't say he is one. He's been overcome. He, <coughs> he make all this noises. He make all this yeah, whatever you can call it. But listen, his power has been taken away. Listen, uh, 1 John 1, 5. Now this is the message we have. Listen, this is the message we have. Heard from him and declared to you, God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. Come on, church, what are you? You are a display of Jesus Christ. There is absolutely no darkness in you. Don't allow it to enter you. You see, it's different from trying to be and from being. Please, don't take the message out of context. If you're not born again, you've got a problem. But if you're born again, God is light. And there's absolutely no darkness in Him. Now, if we are in Christ, the secret is being revealed. God is in us. Hoping light is in you, masses. Yes, hallelujah. We have power over the forces of Satan. We have power. <coughs> Sorry. So why Good Friday? Why Good Friday? We die. A spiritual death. We died of old nature. But we was resurrected in the likeness of Christ. You are, church, the righteousness of God in Christ. Your debt was paid. Any certificate 
that spring again brought against you. Say it's painful. It's painful. Isn't that the reason to have Good Friday? Yes. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that all the morning power over me is being stripped away. Thank you that I can stand in His might and in His power and know that I am an overcomer by the blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't that enough reason to call it Good Friday? Hallelujah. We're going to be served by Rita and her family today on the table. Remind yourself about what has happened. It's good. Jesus has died. But through his death, church, what happened to you? It's important. It's not about going to heaven. I'm already there in Christ. My head is in heaven. But it's about all the other people that's losing out because we don't stand on what God has done for us in Christ. Amen. Amen. Morning, everyone. Morning, everyone. Hearing me okay? John 6, um, the 6th chapter of John, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And um, Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever, just like Pastor Louis has been talking about. Jesus said, this is this bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. He was prophesying what was going to happen to him. So Jesus is offering to give his life so that you may live. He's the bread that gives life. In Ephesians 1, 70, 1, 7, it says, In him we have, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, Hallelujah. in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us yes. with all wisdom and understanding. So he didn't give us just a little bit, he lavished it on us. Yes, hallelujah. So the main theme of communion is bread and the, the wine or the bread drink, representing the blood. The blood of Jesus is so precious because, number one, it redeems us, it buys us back from the enemy. Number two, it brings us near to God. Number three, it washes all our sins away. <coughs> You know, the blood that was spilt over 2,000 years ago is still very, very, very effective today. Hallelujah! Yes. It gives us peace with God. Yes. So we're not separated from Him, but we're eternally connected to Him. And it justifies us as though we yes. never, ever sinned. The blood washes us that clean. It cleanses us from all sin. And number seven... It gives us victory over Satan. Hallelujah. So it just covers everything. The bread and the wine that represents what Jesus did. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 to 12. 
Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, The salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah, Jesus, have now come. Yes, hallelujah. Because the accuser of our brethren has been thrown out. Hallelujah. The one who accuses them before God day and night. They conquered him, they, meaning Christians, those yes. who belong to Jesus, they conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they did not love themselves yes. in the face of death. Yes. So on this Good Friday, what a privilege for us all to come together in his name. Uh, and as the ladies come, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, then you're very welcome. If you haven't done that yet, it's a good opportunity to ask him to come into your life, yes. to be your Lord and your Saviour. Yes. Amen.